Okay, good day everyone and welcome to the executive panel for the story behind Game Dev Philippines. We have here today Andro Baluyot. Andro is an entrepreneur that serves as the Philippine Board of Investments private sector industry champion for the country's video game industry. He has led the country's Game Dev Philippines initiative that capitalizes on the country's advantages in English proficiency, westernized culture and labor costs, and has helped the Philippines into uh, help turn the Philippines into an ideal destination for video game development. Through his own company, GameOps, Andra has supported live operations and quality assurance for international online games for more than 10 years. He is also a former board member of the Game Developers Association of the Philippines. Hello, Andra. Hi, Ria. Uh, thanks for having us here. 50% of what you said is not true. <laughs> Which part? <laughs> Okay, we also have here Walter de Torres. Walter is a 19-year veteran of the video game industry and the co-founder of Pixel Mafia, a premier art development studio located in the Philippines. Prior to this, he was a principal at the Microsoft Studios and held the position of director of production for the Gears of War franchise. He was previously the group development director at Electronic Arts, where he led the development teams that shipped titles like Madden, FIFA, Medal of Honor, Sims, Tiger Woods, Fight Night, and Need for Speed. Hello, Walter. Hello, how are you? Good, good. All right, so let's get right into the questions. I'll start with Andro. Andro, tell us a little bit about this Game Dev Philippines initiative. How did it start? What happened to it? Mm, okay. All right, so uh, Game Dev Philippines started in around 2014. Um, the Philippines doesn't actually have a government agency that's dedicated to the development of the video game industry in particular. So Game Dev Philippines was uh, an initiative to address that. So it was mainly under an agency called the Philippine Board of Investments, which is under the Department of Trade and Industry here, and was done in very close collaboration with the Philippine Senate, uh, particularly the office of former Senator Bam Aquino. So the goal of Game the Philippines was to address the gaps in expertise in the Philippines compared to the you know, international standards. And not only for studios, but also for professionals and also schools. And the idea was that instead of starting from scratch, why not try to transfer or import expertise? And so we figured we could do this in a couple of ways. Uh, one would be getting foreign international studios to set up operations here. Another would be getting experienced professionals to start their own studios in the, in the Philippines. And also having schools, uh, local schools partner with international schools, or at the bare minimum, trying to get projects for existing companies here, uh, foreign projects for existing companies here, and perhaps there would be some transfer of expertise. Uh, but alongside that, uh, the one very important aspect of Game Dev Philippines was to do it as a credible government <laughs> initiative, something that was tying both the, the public and the private sector and branding it as a Philippine initiative so that uh, anyone who was interested in coming here have uh, a very clear place to go in order to set up uh, and feel much more secure. So we, be, so we tried exploring this. Uh, we began this by exploring going to the annual conventions that happen in the industry, um, Gamescom, uh, GDC, et cetera, et cetera, and trying to see, and trying to, try to see what we could find. And that's how, that's how we met the people who became the success stories here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I see. And speaking of success stories, uh, I think Pixel Mafia was one of those who benefited from the Game Dev PH initiative, right? So, yeah. Walter, uh, you were you were the director of production for the coalition, which is a Microsoft Studio based in Vancouver, which was responsible for the development of the Gears of War franchise. But you left it and moved here to the Philippines. So, tell us your story. How did you end up here? That's a, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I look back on it and, uh, you know, on the one hand, it seems like a lifetime ago because so much has happened. Uh, but on the other hand, it just seems like it was just yesterday. So um, my first interaction with uh, Game Dev Philippines was in 2014 uh, at an uh, XDS conference. Um, XDS is an annual conference that's held in Vancouver. It's a game development conference. And uh, Game Dev Philippines set up a booth there. And that's when they had uh, approached me. Um, at the time, um, you know, we were always looking for partners to help us uh, develop our game, and 
were already working with a lot of different studios uh, around the world. Um, and that's when the Philippines came by and, and they said, well, you know, you should take a look at the Philippines. And at that point, I had no idea that anything was happening from a game dev perspective in the Philippines. So I was quite shocked. But, um, but I took their advice and I said, sure, let's, uh, let's test out a couple of studios. And sure enough, one of the studios passed, uh, passed our test. And uh, they're actually one of the, uh, the last partners we signed on for Gears of War 4. And so when they first started out, you know, they're doing okay. But by the time that we had actually shipped uh, the project uh, a year and a half, almost two years later, they'd actually become our most uh, favorite studio. Um, mostly because of their execution, the ability to, to hit on, on goals and stuff. And I think the reason why that happened is because all of their artists, they spoke English. So th there was no language barrier. But I think more important than that was that um, they had a clear understanding of Western pop culture. So what I mean by, by that is that um, everybody in the Philippines, they watch the same movies, listen to the same uh, music, play the same game. So the point of reference is very similar. So when you have an art director talking to artists in terms of, hey, make it like this, they get it right away. And there's just that intrinsic knowledge of like, yeah, I'm, we're, we're talking on the same plane here. So I think that was one of the reasons why uh, it became so successful. Um, you know, when my business partner, Kobe Chan, and I finally decided to, to make the leap to start up our, our own studio, um, you know, the, the question that all of my colleagues back at Microsoft and all my friends back home asked me was like, why are you making the leap from the dev side to the services side? Like, you know, for me at that time, I kind of felt like, um, you know, I was very happy where I, where I was at uh, working at, at Microsoft. I was working on um, a title that I loved. I, I used to play as, as, as a kid growing up. Um, I helped build up the studio from the ground up. I was head of production for Gears of War, you know? like So I, I had no intention of, of ever leaving Microsoft. I mean, they treated me so well. And I still have so many close friends over there. Uh, but a couple of things were happening. Um, so one, you know, this part isn't new, but every iteration of the AAA game, um, the the demand for content has just increases exponentially. It's like this unwinnable arms race that AAA developers have. But budgets typically aren't keeping up. So what that means is that there's this pressure uh, for uh, external partners to do more. And at, and at, at that time, I think almost every Microsoft studio was really looking for um, like that high-end um, art development partner. I mean, there's a lot of art studios around the world, but there was only really a handful that we trusted that could, that, that we felt were true partners that could actually work in our engine, um, that could help us solve problems and uh, be able to execute on our dates and all that stuff. And so that's when uh, Kobe Chan and I really kind of uh, sat down and said, you, you know what, I think this is, I think we can do this. Um, and, and we felt that with, you know, with my background, background in, in production, you know, leading uh, several teams of, uh, at Electronic Arts as well as Microsoft and uh, Kobe's background uh, as a lead artist. He, he's actually been a lead artist on a lot of AAA titles that a lot of uh, people here at the conference probably are, are very well aware of. Um, we thought that we could um, deliver something a, a little bit unique and, and that's why we kind of just, uh, you know, made that leap and uh, here we are. <laughs> wow. It's nice to have you here in the Philippines. Um, Andrea, let's get back to you. Uh, aside from Pixel Mafia, the other company that also benefited from Game Dev PH was Ubisoft. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what happened with Ubisoft? Okay, uh, yeah, so Ubisoft, we actually met Ubisoft very early in the initiative. Uh, I think it was also around in 2014. And it was a very fortunate coincidence because they were already looking at or exploring the possibility of setting up a studio, another studio in Asia. So the timing was very good. And so we, they flew out to the Philippines uh, several times. We had, you know, we had a lot of good meetings, we visited the Senate, the BOI, etc. And it took, it took quite a bit of time for that to happen. And it was very exciting to, you know, to be part of uh, facilitating a venture like that. Uh, it took more than a year, I think, of, of negotiating and generally just figuring things out. But 
eventually, yes, they were able to open a studio in, they partnered with one of the largest universities here uh, in the Philippines, De La Salle University, and they were able to open a studio in 2017, if I'm not mistaken. And now, so in 2017, now they have uh, this, they have their own building and they're doing very well. So, yeah. <laughs> That's good to hear. Okay, so um, let's go back to Walter this time. So you've been here in the Philippines close to four years, right? Yeah, that's right. Three and a half years, to be precise. Three and a half years. So how do you find it working, working in the Philippines? Um, what are the good points of working here? What, what are the challenges? Yeah, um, you know, I love it. I, I, you know, I don't have any regrets uh, making that move. I, I mean, it was certainly difficult. It, was, uh, it took a really uh, big leap of faith on both Kobe and I's uh, part to leave our comfortable jobs at Microsoft and start off something new. Um, you know, the funny thing is, uh, I look back at um, the business plan that uh, Kobe and I uh, put together almost four years ago, um, and, and I review it now, and we've actually hit on a lot of the things that we, that we set out to do, um, almost to the T, and it's almost kind of like, holy smokes, how did we do that? So if you were just to look at that, you'd think that it was, our experience is really quite easy, but uh, what's the furthest from the truth? This is really, really hard. Uh, I think starting up any new business is, is really hard. But I think in, in my situation, um, all of my experience before Pixel Mafia was working in, in these large corporations like Microsoft or Electronic Arts. And in those uh, positions, I had a lot of support. So, uh, you know, I, I have uh, an HR partner, a finance partner, um, you know, an IT guy to take care of all that. And I was backed by uh, a whole bunch of really skilled developers. So it was never, whenever I started up a new studio, it was never, you know, I had a lot of backing, you know, a lot of help and stuff. But this time it was just kind of Kobe and I. And so what we would find is that we would have to like, you know, you know, we were the HR director, we were finance, we were marketing, we were doing all of that stuff. Um, I remember starting up, even just buying uh, our first few computers for the studio, it'd be him and I, going to the local IT shop and walking back from the mall carrying these these computers, you know? Um, so like we were certainly very hands-on and, and starting this all up. Um, you know, one of the other reasons why we chose the Philippines was because, um, you know, the, the, the game dev industry isn't very, uh, wasn't very well established here, but we saw that as an opportunity because we thought, well, you know, what if we're, one of the guys that kind of helped build up that, uh, build up that industry. And I, I think that, um, you know, it, it took, we took a bit of a risk there, but I, I think everything has been, been panning out. Um, um, yeah, it, it's just, it's, it's been, I look back on it and it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm shocked by all the, all the hard times, but I'm also, you know, I look back and uh, very proudly in terms of what we've been able to establish. So, Nice. Well, I'm sure the Philippines has its own quirks and challenges. Could you tell us a, like an interesting story that you've had since coming to the Philippines? <laughs> well, I, I think I had to get used to, used to everything because, you know, coming from Canada, um, you know, people in Vancouver complain about traffic, but, you know, there's, there's no traffic at all in Vancouver compared to what, what, what we have here in Manila. And, and also, it's just really hot here. Uh, in Vancouver, there's four seasons here. There's two seasons. There's dry and hot and, you know, dry and wet. And then, and then that's it. Um, but one of the things that, you know, starting up that was, um, that took me by surprise was, I think, uh, the Philippines affinity to paperwork and just being exact on how to set up businesses and all that stuff. That was really quite a challenge. I mean, um, we had to go to a ton of different government agencies to set up our company. Um, I'll tell you this, this, this one story. Um, this one agency, they required six copies of this 20 page document. Um, and I'm thinking like, why do you need six copies for it? You know, we have computers nowadays, right? So I don't know where they put all these copies, maybe sort of in, in some sort of warehouse, but um, they're very exact about that. You know, in, in, in our case, you know, they wanted six copies of that, that document. They wanted uh, um, uh, paper clips to, to tie up all the, the documents and they wanted it in clear folders. Well, I went to that agency and I didn't have clear folders. I used staples and said I only had five copies. And so they just turned around and said, well, 
see you tomorrow, you know. And meanwhile, I see behind them, it's like, hey, there's a photocopier. You're like, you can, you can help me out. <laughs> but, you know, uh, it's just one of those things that you, get, you just kind of have to deal with. But what really helped us out in navigating through that level of bureaucracy and stuff was, was the BOI. Um, and obviously, you, you know, game that Philippines. But with the BOI in particular, it was, it was Angela uh, Paez as well as Nani Dormiendo. Um, they played uh, uh, an integral role in helping us get stood up. And you know, I look back on those those first two months, and it was like, oh man, this is this is really hard. I, I, I hope this works out. <laughs> but here we are, you know, three and a half, almost four years later, and and we're prospering. So it's it's, it's good. That's good to hear. But let's go back to Andra this time. Let's go back to uh, discussing Game Dev Philippines. What are the future plans for Game Dev Philippines? Okay. Uh, all right. Well, back after, after some of those initial accomplishments were made, um, there was a moment a few years ago wherein we assessed the progress and decided you know, that we, we could take a few years to observe what happens in, with the development of the local expertise. You know, at that point, we're in Ubisoft and Walter were already here. And try to see uh, where exactly we'll be picking up from if we, if we gave the industry some time to develop. Uh, but the, the idea is really, bit, it's the, next, the next logical thing to do has always been to go to do an incubator. So is that something we knew way back as well, that it would hit the point we're in we want these people that have developed expertise, we want them to have another place to go wherein they could develop their own games and their own content and you know, release it, of course, to the international market. So that's, the incubator is the next logical step. This is something that we, we actually started doing already last year. Uh, and However, unfortunately, yes, world situation right now, COVID and everything, uh, it took a back seat. But yes, we did start working that working on that already i mean some things about the incubator though it's like it it's not it is open it's open to both public and private funding you know that's it doesn't have to be one or the other and then at the same time we did our research on what incubators are like in other countries and we we know that we have to come up with an incubator that's a little more customized to fit the filipino work culture which is something that has uh a lot more consistency in terms of guidance and mentoring, you know, and setting of milestones. Uh, I've seen some incubators that, uh, although I'm not knocking off any, I mean, you know, what their different things work for different uh, different setups, but I've seen some incubators that that uh, seem to concentrate a lot of the guidance into a short period, and then some which is spread out. And so we want to have we we want to have something that's a little more uh, frequent and consistent or balanced in between. So yeah, that's that's the general idea. And I can say that definitely when when we're able to go out into the world again, that's one of the things we'll be working. One of the first things we'll be working on. Yeah. Well, that's interesting to to hear. At least it's something that. Uh the newer studios, younger studios can look forward to, I think. So let's go to the last question. This is for both of you, but I guess let's start with Walter first. Uh, how do you see the future of the game, the video game industry here in the Philippines? Um, well, I think you know, I'm pretty bullish about it. Um, you know, if I take a look at um, what Pix Mafia has been able to do, um, actually the, the year prior to uh, COVID, uh, we were able to triple the size of our studio. Uh, we'd grown to, um, just nearing uh, 90 people in, in the company. So we've, we've uh, experienced quite a bit of growth and we brought on a lot of new partners and stuff. Uh, and even with COVID, um, you know, our company is, is uh, operating at full capacity at this point. And, you know, we're looking forward to starting up even more projects again. And um, so things are good. I, obviously, we're not gonna have the kind of growth that we had last year because of uh, the pandemic, but um, I, I think that the, the skill set can be developed here. And I, I think that that's the key, that if uh, Filipinos are given the opportunity to, to learn and, and to be mentored and trained, um, they can um, uh, operate a very, at a very high level. You, you know, I, I take a look at a lot of people that, that we've hired. They all want to be 
uh, world-class artists in their own right. And, you know, I see them, they're working very, very hard and, and being able to kind of reach those levels. So it, it's pretty exciting to see. Um, you know, what I see happening maybe in the next five years, you know, I think th there will be new studios opening up. You know, what I'm hoping is like full-fledged studios. Um, and I think it'll happen either internally or externally. And I think as we have more studios uh, growing, that that um, that ecosystem, that game development ecosystem will start developing and start growing. And, and our conversations with schools and our conversations with with government agencies to, to hopefully create more um, business incentives for, for people to, to invest here will will also pick up. So um, yeah, I think there's still a long way to go, um, but I think there's the opportunity is, is certainly certainly there. Yeah, well, I agree that there's it's still a long way to go, but at least there's progress, right? Mm -hmm. Andra, same question. What do you uh, what do you see as the future of the video game industry here in the Philippines? Well, okay. Uh, I'll try to throw back to the initial days of <laughs> Game Dev Philippines, the pitch. But, you know, I still really, I, I mean, I always have and I always will believe that I remember telling this to a lot of the people we met when Game Dev Philippines started is that where else can you really go, right? I mean, it's like Walter said, there's so many things about um, budgets and costs are such a big issue. And the choices that the world really has. I mean, if you look at the Philippines, the combination of factors here is just really something you're not going to find anywhere else, right? I mean, um, the people, the English, and the Westernization. You can find those things individually in different areas, but the combination of which is really not something you're going to find and anywhere else. And I, I keep thinking of, you know, the, I recall now the, the slogan of Game Dev Philippines, which is create more. You know, I remember the day that we came up with that, with that tagline for um, with the government. And we were just trying to think, I mean, we, that each industry that is supported by the, the, by the government has its own tagline. And create more for the Philippines is really centered around one idea, is that if you have, let's say, a million dollars, I tell this to my friends in Korea a lot. Uh, if, you, if you're starting up your own company, you have a million dollars, you can do something with that in Korea, right? But what is the equivalent of that if you take it to the Philippines? And assuming you have everything that you needed to accomplish the same thing, you would actually be able to create more, right? You would be able, and not just create more, but you could also be able to have more. I mean, Walter is a very good example I mean, maybe in the question and answer portion, you can ask him a few things about, hey, Walter, what do you have more, right? <laughs> now that you're here in the Philippines. But you, you do have to take that leap. And, if, and like Walter did. And, you know, if you do, there's, there's much more to be gained. It's just definitely not going to be easy. And so as more people do this, as more people realize that these factors are unique to the Philippines and very advantageous, you know, we've seen that progress the last several years, and I'm, I'm very confident it's going to continue. But yes, it's still a long way to go. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for our panel for today. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Walter. Thank you very much. All right.